Okay, just cut that out. Cosette. Hello billionaires, welcome back to my channel. So today is the day after the Taurus full moon. New moon, new moon, it's a new moon. And I know this is a little bit late. I know I usually upload my moon horoscopes on the day of the moon, but things have just been so crazy and the energy is still very potent. So I thought that I would make it now, better late than never. Here we go. I'm going to pull up the chart of today. So if you see me looking down, that's why I just have my laptop in front of me for the chart. Okay, I have it already open. Let's see. Hey, my little kitty is climbing my chair. I realized like my, my dress matches my background. So like I put on this, so I'm not like, <laughs> well, it's cold too, but okay. So the sun is in Taurus right now. It is Taurus season, so we have a lot of different planets in Taurus. And one of the biggest shifts that we're feeling right now is Uranus moving into Taurus. That is a huge, huge, huge deal. I believe it's going to be there for the next seven years or so. So we have the sun in Taurus, the moon is in Gemini, Venus is also in Gemini. So we're feeling this very childlike creative energy at the moment. A lot of creativity and a lot of playfulness, a lot of innocence. So it would make sense right now if you are working with kids, if you're around kids a lot and that, that energy, or if you are just learning how to play again, learning how to create again, which I definitely feel like I am. I've definitely been getting back into my writings, into my speaking, into my art, into everything that I love to create. Okay, so it is a very creative time. And I've been asked before, like what planet rules creativity? Some astrologers would say Mercury, some would say Uranus. Honestly, if I had to pick one, Venus. I would say Venus is the planet of creativity because she rules abundance, vanity, beauty, pleasure, all of those things that we love and like. However, I believe every planet does have an impact on our creativity because at the end of the day, that's all that we are, you know, is creators. We're here to create. So I believe that every planet can affect that. Okay, so the sun is in Taurus, the moon is in Gemini, Mercury is also in Taurus. So that means our communication is going to be grounded. We are going to speak from a level-headed place. We won't just blurt out what we, what we feel like saying when uh, Mercury is in, say, Aries. We just blurt things out. But since Mercury is going to be in Taurus, we're going to be... It's like we're going to be speaking with a purpose. We're going to be thinking before we speak, taking time. Like, should I even say that? Like, how should I say it? How should I deliver it? Um, we will be very conscious of what we say to others around this time and new connections can be made right now. It's a very social time, especially with Venus and Gemini. You are going to meet a lot of people. Uh, Mars is in Aquarius right now and I'm looking at the chart um, for the day of the 16th. So I'm filming this on the 16th. This energy from the, 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 the new moon in Taurus was yesterday yesterday morning, uh, LA time. So the energy is still very potent. Again, I'm sorry this is a little late, but you know, I had to do what I had to do. I have so much footage to edit. Like I'm very happy to just be getting this out. Okay, so since Mars is in Aquarius, zero degrees, I just feel a lot of millennial energy from that aspect. From Mars is all about action, drive, ambition. And Aquarius is all about knowledge, about networking, about community, friendships, home. So we could be working on our home life right now. I definitely feel that like decluttering things, reorganizing. So Mars is gonna put a little bit of fire in you to clean up things. But I also see with Aquarius, with Mars in Aquarius. It's like, it's just a lot of millennial energy. My cat is freaking out right now. I think that we're gonna be doing a lot of projects. It's a very creative aspect. And then we have Saturn in Taurus. Oh shoot, okay, I skipped Jupiter. Okay, so we have three planets right now that are retrograde, as well as the true North Node is retrograde in Leo. So the planets that are retrograde are Jupiter. Jupiter is retrograde in Scorpio until July, early July. Saturn 
and Pluto are both retrograde in Capricorn. So you've probably heard me say in some videos before that I don't trip out about Mercury retrograde. Not just because I was born during a Mercury retrograde in Pisces, but because everyone puts too much hype and too much pressure on Mercury. Like Mercury has such a bad rep and I feel so bad for Mercury because Mercury honestly can fuel our creativity and help us make connections a lot more than we know. So we should not be hating on Mercury. Mercury helps us and every retrograde can be beneficial. You know, it's what you make it. You can't just like say, oh my God, the planets are retrograde. Life is awful. I'm gonna blame every bad thing that happens on these retrogrades. No, it doesn't work like that. Retrogrades are giving you a chance to reevaluate and to take a second look at things and be like, hmm, is this really the direction I want to be headed in? Or is this really like what I wanna do with my life? Am I doing what I love? That's what retrogrades can, can, retrogrades just shake things up and they cause movement. They move stagnant energy. With Jupiter retrograde in Scorpio, I see us really believing in abundance. And that's what Jupiter wants to teach us. So from every retrograde, every planetary retrograde offers a lesson. So the lesson from Jupiter right now, Jupiter is asking you to really believe that you are abundant. Jupiter rules abundance and expansion and growth. So Jupiter wants all of those things for you. Jupiter wants you to just succeed and skyrocket. But sometimes we are the ones who hold ourselves back from that. So the lesson with Jupiter retrograde and Scorpio is just trusting yourself and believing in that abundance and believing that you can reach a million subscribers. You can have a million dollars. Whatever your goal is, just know that you can have it. Know that it is obtainable. So that's what Jupiter wants you to do, S Jupiter retrograde. So Saturn retrograde in Capricorn. Okay, so Capricorn and Taurus are a very similar energy and that's why I like got them mixed up earlier. So they're both, they're both earth signs, both very grounded. So what I feel with Saturn in Capricorn retrograde it's about authority. It's about how we react to authority. If we are going to be proactive or reactive towards authority and towards organization and structure, because that's what Saturn rules. Saturn rules our governments, our parents, our systems, our structures, all of that nitty gritty stuff. Saturn is like an old man. Like I see the planets as male or female, sometimes both. Like Neptune, I don't feel any gender with. But with Saturn, I just see an old grumpy man, like an old paradigm that we are still living out. You know, just Google like the rings of Saturn and all that stuff. Um, we are shedding this paradigm. So with Saturn in Capricorn, it's having us look at authority. It's how we react to authority. Because Capricorn, Capricorn is quite a networker like Aquarius. They both really know how to network and really have good people skills. and. However, Capricorn is better with money than Aquarius. Capricorn plans ahead for the future. You know, it, Capricorn can be the one that like pulls everyone together. Like, hey guys, like let's hang out. Like, let me plan a gathering right now. Um, so that's Capricorn. So it's about authority. You know, I already said that a lot. <laughs> um, okay, so like this is a great time to switch your schools. If you are in like a high school or a college and you're thinking about making a switch or like dropping some classes or like to start up this, it's a great time to do so. Saturn is really supporting that change and wants you to do what's best for you. You know, just ask yourself, is this something that's gonna benefit me? Am I gonna come out better on top? But honestly, it's an iffy time with contracts. Um, I would just avoid signing them for the next couple weeks but if it's ultimately necessary just make sure everything's in line and everything is going to go as planned because saturn retrograde can cause a lot of change and like i was saying earlier mercury gets so much hate so much so much of a bad rep when really the planets the planetary retrogrades we need to focus on are saturn and pluto when saturn and pluto are retrograde things change like dramatically dramatic changes and also uranus because uranus is the planet of change and unexpected out of the box thinking okay and uranus right now is in taurus so that is a very big deal it is at zero degrees in taurus so as i'm filming this the planets that are shifting are mars just came into aquarius 
So that's gonna have us be thinking, be taking action for our community. Like honestly, we could be picking up trash, like having a beach cleanup or hosting a vegan potluck or like, I don't know, like planting a garden, you know, helping your community in some way because that's very uh, Aquarian energy is community, home, family. Um, Aquarius understands the important of, importance of the planet and her power and respecting her. Aquarius understands that. So Mars will help us do that. And Uranus is just such a big one. Uranus is coming here to shake things up. Uranus wants to make change. It really wants to just come in here and help you release any old bad habits that you have. Okay, and Neptune is in Pisces. So Neptune rules Pisces and together they are a very dreamy, distracting pair. So during this time, a lot of distractions can come up. It is, it is up to you to stay focused and on your grind. Hustle, hustle, hustle. This is a time of hustle, especially with Saturn retrograde and Pluto retrograde. It is a time of hustle. And a lot of money is coming in for all of us. It's gonna be a really Uranus. Mm, ah, okay, that makes sense. Uranus just entered Taurus. I've said it a lot. Uranus has just entered Taurus at zero degrees. So, like, we are feeling this shift, like, come in just now. So, Taurus is a fixed Earth sign. So, it's very grounded, very level headed, very secure. It's about security with Taurus. And also precision, getting it right on the bullseye. So, with this, I feel a lot of money coming in for us. A lot. And with Saturn retrograde, a uh, career change can happen. You can switch a career right now, or like I said, switch schools. Uh, I just see changes happening with that. And we also have Pluto retrograde, 20 degrees in Capricorn. So, Pluto, as you know, is the planet of death and rebirth, also rules our sole purpose. So, with Pluto in Capricorn retrograde, Hmm. Well, like I said before, Capricorn is an earth sign. It's very level headed. It's quite a networker. So when it's in Pluto retrograde, hmm, this one's kind of a weird energy I'm feeling like I don't know how to go about it. It's kind of awkward. Um, Pluto is ruled by Scorpio. So Pluto has this like underworld energy. Pluto is the ruler of the underworld. So when it's in Capricorn and it's retrograde, Ugh, I literally, I'm getting chills right now. Whoa. Hmm. Wow, like full body chills. <sighs> so, okay, the leader of the underworld is meeting the level headed organizer and is retrograde. I don't even know what to think about this right now. It's kind of got me fucked up. I don't, I don't know. <sighs> wow. I've never had so much trouble trying to interpret something. Okay, um, let, let's come back to that. Okay, so our last retrograde, which I mentioned earlier, is our retrograde of the North Node. So we have a North Node and we have a South Node. Currently the North Node is in Leo and the South Node is in Aquarius. Those are actually my nodes. So if you're an astrologer, comment below what you think that means. I've heard all kinds of things. I'd love to know your opinion. Um, yeah, the nodes are aligned currently with my nodes and retrograde. The north node is retrograde 8 degrees Leo. So I think a lot of us are being asked to step up to the plate right now, to take a leadership because right now you guys are watching this from all over the world and you're you're <laughs> you have eyes. You can see that there is a lot of division around us. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of darkness and sadness. And so we have, to, we have to illuminate the darkness with our light and with our love. So that is truly the only way. So I think a lot of us need to speak our truth right now and feel comfortable leading and having others look up to us. Because honestly, so many people are looking up to the wrong people. You know, I'm not gonna like name any names or like get political on you right now, but in America, we don't have the best president. <laughs> That's not a lie. And so since we don't have the best leaders, we need to make our own leaders. We need to be our own leaders. You know, don't, don't worship anyone else but yourself. Don't put anyone on a pedestal. There is no hierarchy.
Okay, and our last aspect is Chiron. Chiron. Chiron, Chiron, I don't know. I don't know. Is it French? Chiron is at one degrees in Aries. So as you may have known, if you follow astrology, Chiron was recently in, in Pisces for I don't know how long, but I think it was a couple of years at least. I know Chiron's transits are very, very slow compared to the rest of the planets. However, Chiron is now in Aries at one degree. So Chiron is not a planet. Chiron is an asteroid and it is named the Wounded Healer. So with it in Aries, I really feel new beginnings, new revelations, lots of deep healing, lots of releasing. It's like we've done the work with Chiron in Pisces. We've done the healing. We've done the, the, the looking inward. You know, we've, we've, we've been like this for so long and now it's time to just be like, oh, you know, and be open to receive, be open to the universe and its abundance. All right, I think that is it. What do I want to say? Wow, this is 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me know if you would like to see more astrology videos like this. I really do love talking about it and just sharing the knowledge. So yeah, leave a comment below if you'd like to see more. Give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, share this video with a friend. And yeah, if you'd like to book an astrology natal chart with me so I can take a look at your entire chart, then head over to my website. All the links are below. If you'd also like to book an oracle reading or a Reiki healing, I can do long distance healing if you are not in LA. I would love to work with any of you. Okay, <laughs> have a magical week. Ciao!